I know, I know, I'm late. and clan members. We're here to talk about episode 55 of Pokemon Horizons and now I'm basically like a week late. I was supposed to have this out way earlier but I didn't even get to finish watching the episode until yesterday and then like my work week has just been atrocious. Okay? That's literally the reason why all this happened. This, it's also the reason why the previous video which is my first regional VGC tournament. I would really appreciate it if you guys go check it out. I'll leave it in the end card as the previous video that came out before this one. So I haven't been able to like really get in my groove of things because I just haven't had the time. But I did watch this episode, I watched it yesterday, and I have mixed feelings with it. I'm gonna try to like evolve these reviews over time, you know? So I'm not gonna give you guys the, like a full breakdown about everything that happened in the episode, but I will give some, some key points and my thoughts on it, right? So in this episode, the kids are back in the academy, which we, we already knew was gonna happen from the prior episode. And we're gonna get battles with the Elite Force. Now, I don't have a problem with the concept of the double battles that they had. My issue in this particular episode is I've never liked in animes when we've had multiple fights for different main characters happening in the same episode because it doesn't really give them time to be flushed out and properly executed, right? And in this case, it's even worse because they decided to screw over Dot and Roy and gave a specific episode to Liko. Now, I don't, it's not one of those things where I feel like they're not really tackling these characters evenly at all because Dot had a two-parter for her gym test and then Liko now gets a full-blown episode of her like battle against Rika. And I I just feel like there, this disconnect seems to be happening a lot frequently and I'm not, like I understand that not every character is gonna get like spotlight like you know, back to back. You know, I understand that you have three protagonists here that we're dealing with. But my issue comes into the fact that the, the way they're handling the the spotlights is, is a little jarring, okay? if I wouldn't mind it if every episode was dedicated to a different one, right? And they all got their spotlight, right? But when you have to, like, squeeze two of your main protagonists into one episode just to give a highlight to the other one, in my mind, it feels a little wrong, okay? That's, all, that's the main crutch of this discussion that I'm having with you. The other part about the episode is that I, I, I kind of feel like I know what's going to happen here because the way they're they're doing it is that Dot wins her battle and Roy loses his, which is the flip to what happened in the actual gym test. Roy is the only one that won his. Like, his, he's the only one that won his battle. Liko and Dot both lost theirs. So my interpretation of this is that Roy gets his loss here and then Dot and Liko get their wins. So Dot won against Poppy and then Liko is gonna win against Rika. My only thing weird about this is that I don't think Dot should have won in her battle because the way they, they were setting it up is that the student's supposed to be the highlight of the battle, but the one who got the final blow was Belly Bolt, which is Iono's Pokemon. So, and I, I understand that, that Dot was able to terrestrialize, right? She, she was able to shine with her terrestrialization. But in my opinion, I feel like if they were supposed to highlight the student, the final blow should have been hers, right? Quaxley should have been the one to defeat uh, either Tinkaton or or the, what the fuck is it? The, the, the fucking elephant. I don't fucking remember the name of the stupid elephant. I, I literally can't remember exactly what this thing was called. <laughs> but anyways, um, my point still stands. Like, I, I don't know how I feel about that. And then Roy, like, listen, Roy's always been my favorite character, but I actually don't mind him losing to Hazel because the guy has a fucking back caliber, and I'm sorry, you have a fucking, uh, what the fuck is the name of the, Dolive? Dolive? I think this is the, the evolution of Smoliv and the pre-evolution to Arboliva. I think that's what it's called. And Fuecoco against a fucking back caliber who's an ice dragon type fucking blows with a signature ability that makes it stronger when it's hit by a fire type move. Like, realistically speaking, there was no chance. Like the Flapple, I don't even know why it was here. Okay, because Baxcalibur literally did everything. I think I think Flapple had like one attack, if that, but everything else was all Flapple. Like Hazel sucks <laughs> as a double battle. <laughs> like that's what I'm gonna say. Hazel sucks as a double battle. Cause like Poppy was able to use 
like her Tinkerton and her whatever the fuck the elephant is. She was able to use them really good as a pair. Um, and I'm expecting that Rika's gonna have the same thing, although I don't know what they're both, uh, like, we saw Claude sign, right? Which is one of my favorite mods from Gen 9, by the way. But I don't know what the other Pokemon that she's gonna use in the gym battle is, because I haven't really looked for it. And the episode's coming out tonight anyways, so, well, for me, I'll be able to see it tomorrow morning. But, it's technically out tonight. So I'll probably find out about it before the, the, before I watch the episode. But, I just, I feel like they didn't really highlight a lot of the, the strengths of the, of the Elite Four. And and I also saw some discourse on, on on Twitter and shit like that. People talking down on the Elite Four and stuff like that. They need to understand that right now, they're not in the state that they're supposed to overwhelm their opponents. This is a teaching moment. And again, it, it's a double battle between them and a student, which they're trying to prop up, and a gym leader, which is supposed to help the student shine right so they're not really going all out i'm pretty sure that if the elite four especially the ones from from paldea if they really wanted to go at it they would have been able to handle because like a lot of the discourse that i was seeing is like oh i don't like how in the recent series it seems like they're really toning down the elite four and the champion just to match the energy and the levels of the main characters and while i can't say much about journeys because i didn't watch that dumpster fire i can't really acknowledge that stance for this particular group because like I said this is supposed to be like a teaching academy which means the whole point of gym leaders and the elite four is to help the students improve and grow so they're for the most part they're not really there to like be an overwhelming force that you're supposed to challenge they're supposed to guide you so I understand if it feels a little weird because the stance isn't the same as it was in the past. In the past, the Elite Four and the Champion were like the final goal. Right now, that's not the, that, that's not even the point of the games. In the games, and I've, I've been saying this for now like over a year now, the Gym Leader, the Elite Four, the Champion, like that whole plot line is like the weakest part of Scarlet Violet. Every other story in this game is way better because they don't really do much to highlight the gym leaders. I don't remember half of them. And the only ones I remember is because they they had something in the game that really set them apart. Like I said, Iona's been plastered everywhere since the fucking, even before the games came out. And the only other gym leader that I vividly remember is Bracius. And that's because the guy, like from, from jump, I was like, this guy's a fucking sadist. Like a fucking creepy ass. <laughs> and, and Kofu. And the only reason why I, I've been saying Kofu is because I love his gym test so much. But every other gym leader, I'm just like mad with. I, I don't really have any connection with any of them. It feels weird for the people that are watching the show to not realize the differences between the, the role of the Elite Four, the gym leaders, and the champions in this storyline versus the past. Like you can't really treat them the same because their goals aren't. But aside from that... The overall episode was fine. Um, I didn't have too many problems with it. Like I said, the only issue is I don't like the the fact that Roy and Dot had to share an episode when they could have just had their own individual episodes to really give them time to flesh out a battle, right? I feel like that because they had to squeeze in both of them and they have to do this like this middle filler portion with Sango and her exploding Glalie just to make a joke out of this whole thing, right? I just, I feel personally speaking, this wasn't good. And like, I guess... It gives some characterization because we already know Sango's like a fucking crazy bitch. Um, and, and like, I, I really like Onyx. I'm really liking him. Like, I wish, I wish we got more characterization out of, out of these guys. Because the problem with the Explorers right now is that because right now we're doing this whole focus on, on Liko, Dot, and Roy and their storylines and shit like that. We're not really getting more from the Explorer side of things. And like, because the whole thing with, with Onyx was like, oh, I know I'm supposed to be the, the one that, that's, you know, shines bright and shit like that. But he's out here, like, taking the hits for Tulip because he's like, I can't, like, let somebody else, you know, take the fall for me, right? I can't use somebody else. Like, I love this guy's mentality. And, and you know, I don't I don't dislike Sango either. I really like the way she's been portrayed. I just wish we had more, like, stuff with them. I want, I want more interactions with these guys. Or at least, like, an episode dedicated to the Explorers, right? I, I don't mind the the highlight they gave to Amethio the last time we saw anything Explorer related because he's now, now we know the storyline behind him is, is the grandson of the leader of the Explorers and all that other shit. I want more interactions between the, the ones that are supposed to be with us right now because 
the the fact that this is only like the third time we've really had an encounter or, or at least acknowledgement that these fucking guys are here, right? It just feels a little off, especially since they're supposed to be chasing the kids. Um, I'm, I'm hoping more development out of them in the future because I really like the, the way they're... Every explorer is different, and I like that. I really enjoy the fact that they are their own individual characters with their own personalities and 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 goals and ways and thinkings and I I, I really like I like the characterization they did for them. Okay, that's that's my main point uh, of this section right now is that I really like the characterization they did for Songo and Onyx, and I I can't wait to see more of them. I really like it's like such a weird. But that's a fresh air, right? Because we were stuck with Team Rocket for so long, and now we have like characters like this, and I'm just like, I actually want more of them now than I ever like. I got to a point with Team Rocket where I just I was done with them. Like I, I'm pretty sure it was around like the the Gen Six arc where I was just done with them. Like Black and White was like peak Team Rocket for me, and, and nobody can debate me. I, I'm I, I will fight to the death. Okay, Team Rocket. Black and white Team Rocket is peak Team Rocket. There, I said it, hands down, done. But anyways, I'm just gonna leave the video off here because I've been rambling a lot. I hope you like this style. Obviously, like I said, I'm gonna tweak it and evolve alongside you guys. So always feedback is welcome. And also let me know what you guys thought about the episode in the comment section below. I have been your host, Horace Croxton, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, and everything in between.